Learn how to patchwork with Sewing School and make the beautiful piece a tote bag in Portuguese tiles or Shibori style. Follow me and I'll show you how to make this stylish patchwork bag. Cutting out. Take out the fabric panel from your kit and give it a good press. Now if you have a look at it, you can see all the pieces are printed onto the panel and there are labels above each of them. All of the seam allowances are included in all the pieces. So all you need to do is cut out each of the pieces and pin the relevant label to the top of the right side of each fabric piece. And then you'll remember which way up they are and which piece is which. For the large fabric piece A, we're going to cut this in a moment because this is printed as one large piece. But here you can see the handles and all the other pieces. Now I've cut out all of the outer fabric pieces. So there's the back and the gusset pieces. And you can see that I've labelled them by pinning the label to the top of the right side. So put those into one pile. And here are the two handles. You can see these have been printed so they look like a faux leather with the holes in them. These are all the lining pieces. So you've got a back lining, a front lining, two side gusset linings and a base gusset lining. Put those all to one side in a pile that you can use when you come to make the lining of your bag. The linings are printed to match the outers. And then with all the fabric pieces, the patchwork pieces, you can see I've cut them out and put them into piles and then just put one of the labels on. But if you pin them together in a pile, you can see that they're all the same. And then all the, the corner squares I've put together. Now with fabric A, this is been given to you as one piece so that you can get accurate cutting and also it gives you the opportunity to learn how to subcut. Subcut is simply cutting one piece of fabric into smaller pieces. Now start off by laying your fabric piece on your rotary cutting mat. Now to make sure that you start off with a nice straight edge just put the ruler on the very edge of it and cut off a tiny strip. My strip is about an eighth of an inch. It's just a little strip to just give you a nice cut edge. So this is cutting along the length. You now need to cut this into four strips that are two and a half inches wide. So if you place your ruler on top and match up the two and a half inch mark with the left hand side, you've now got a two and a half inch strip. And then repeat that to cut the remainder into another three strips so you have four in total. Now, when you're doing patchwork, it's much easier, quicker and more accurate if you use a rotary cutting ruler and rotary cutter. If you don't have this equipment, then you could just draw lines onto the fabric and then cut along it. But if this is your start to patchwork, then I would recommend that you buy the mat, the ruler and the rotary cutter to just speed it up. So now I've cut my fabric into four strips that are two and a half inches wide along the length of the fabric. You now need to cut each of these strips into two and a half inches square. So I've lined up the long edge on the straight horizontal line on my mat. I'm going to just trim off the end again. Make sure that the ruler is straight with the lines on the mat. That just gives you a nice straight edge to start with. And then using your ruler, Line it up so that you're cutting two and a half inch strips. If you always keep your strip on the horizontal lines on the mat, you know that it's straight. And then all you've got to do is match up the two and a half inch vertical line on your cut on your ruler to make sure that you cut them accurately. I'm using a small ruler for this section just because I'm cutting small pieces. But obviously, if you've got a long ruler, you can use that. But I tend to keep a long two, 24 inch ruler and a small six and a half inch ruler. Those are the sort of the basic rulers that you'll need. You will have a piece left over on the end. You won't need that. It's just because I wanted to make sure that you had enough fabric. Now I'm going to cut the other three strips into two and a half inch squares. But if you want to save some time, what you can do is line up a several square strips and cut them all at the same time. So you can see here I'm lining up three of the strips with the horizontal lines on the cutting mat. Now, if you, I'm using my long ruler for this because I needed to go across the length. So again, just trim off the edge. There's enough allowance in the strips so that you can trim off the edges and then you've got a bit left over. I've lined up my ruler with the vertical lines on the cutting mat to do this. 
So if you now line up the two and a half inch mark on the left hand side, you can cut all three at the same time. Another way to do this is to stack the strips and place them on top of each other. But I like to place mine in lines like that. When you're cutting through just one layer, sometimes it can be more accurate. Or I can often line up, lay two or three on top of each other. Now to save a bit of time, rather than moving the strips, I'm cutting it all in one go. So I've cut two and a half inches, then five inches, and then I've lined up seven and a half inches. And that means that I'm cutting all of those at the same time without having to constantly take the strips away. So to cut the remainder of the strips, again, line up the two and a half inch mark. So you can cut all four strips at the same time in this way. And then those pieces that you've got on the right, they're just left over, you won't need those. And now if you put all of those fabric A squares together, you've now got 24 two and a half inch squares. So if you just take the label, just to remind you which is which, take the label and then you can pin that on top and then you'll remember which these are, which you'll need for when you're assembling the patchwork. Making the patchwork. The bag front out is made from piece squares, which are called diamond in a square blocks. Let's start by making set one. To make set one, you need to take one fabric B large square and four fabric A corner squares. So put the others to one side and just work on these for now. Now turn all the corner squares over so they're wrong sides up and draw a diagonal line across them from one corner to the other like this. I'm using an erasable pen for this, but you could use a pencil instead. So just draw a line diagonally from one corner to the opposite corner on each of these corner squares. Now take the large square and place it right sides up and take one of the corner squares and put it in the top left hand corner and pin it into place. The diagonal line needs to run from the bottom left to the top right, as you can see here. So pin it either side of the diagonal line, but not on the diagonal line, because then it means you don't need to remove the pins as you're sewing. Take another square and put that in the bottom right corner. And again, make sure that the diagonal line is running from the bottom left to the top right, just like I've done here. So you can see the two diagonal lines are running in the same way. We're now going to sew along these lines. So pop it under your sewing machine. You don't need to reverse stitch because we'll be sewing over the ends of these seams later when we assemble the bag. So just lower the needle at one end of the line and sew it together all the way along the line using your normal stitch length. I've used about a 2.4 here, but you can use a 2 to a 2.4 depending on what your machine says. Once you get to the end of the line, cut the thread, turn it round and then you can sew the along the other line at the same time. So lower the needle. And because you've drawn the line, it's really easy to keep it straight. So this is really good for beginners to patchwork because you've got a drawn line so you know that your seam will be straight. So there's the two sewn lines. Now place it on your ironing board or mat and remove the pins. Give the fabric a press now just to set the seams. That just keeps this all lying nice and flat. Now, before you cut anything, fold the corner of one square over so it meets the top left-hand corner like this. If you press it before you cut it, you can be, you'll can you get more accurate results. Now, peel back the top corner and just remove that seam allowance. So if you cut about a quarter of an inch outside of that sewn line, those pieces can be discarded now or you keep them in your stash for other things. Press it back into place. Now do this with the other corner. So fold the corner over to the top left corner. Hold it down with your finger and give it a press. Then you can be sure that these corners are accurate and square. Just peel back the top and cut off the seam allowance through the two fabric layers. Just quarter of an inch outside of the seam. Fold it back over and give it a press just to hold because it just moves it slightly when you've peeled it back. 
Now take the other two corner squares that you drew lines on to and place one of them in the top right corner. And the diagonal line this time needs to run from the top left to the bottom right. And again, pin it into place either side of the line. Take the final corner square and put that in the bottom left corner. Again, the diagonal line needs to run from the top left to the bottom right. Because what we're doing here is cutting off the corners of the large square so that you create a diamond in the centre. Now, in the same way as before, you need to stitch along those lines. I've done that already. Stitch them in exactly the same way as you stitched the first two squares. Remove the pins. Give it a press to set the seams. That means this is nice and flat. Then fold the corner over to the top left corner. You might need to give it a little pull just to hold it in place, but hold it in place with your finger. And then do that with the other one. Fold the corner over to meet the top left corner. And give it a press. And now you can trim the seam allowances. So just peel back the top, cut off the fabric a quarter of an inch outside of the seam. This just re reduces bulk in this, otherwise you'd have three layers of fabric where you only need one. Then once that's done, give it a press and you can see you've now completed one diamond in a square block for set one. And then you can see all the seam allowances are facing outwards. And press to one side but facing outwards. You now need to repeat this with the remainder of the squares to create six diamond inner square blocks for set one using exactly the same large squares and corner squares. Making set two. Set two is made in the same way as set one but this time you need to use the fabric B corner squares and the fabric C large squares. Now you can see I've pinned all the corner squares and I've got some left over just to the two sides as I've done with the first ones. Now I'm going to show you how to sew them together by chain piecing. Chain piecing is where you sew along one of the same seams, but instead of cutting the thread, take the next piece of fabric that you've pinned, the large square with the small corner square on, and just place it so the corner is right next to it with a couple of stitches that you'll find that will be left between them unsewn. Take the next piece of fabric, line up the drawn line so it's level with the machine needle and you just sew across them. Once you've sewn all six together, that's called chain piecing and it just saves time and thread. All you need to do now is cut the thread between each of the squ squares. You can see I've got all of mine in a line here. So just cut the thread. You've got a couple of stitches between each of them. Now turn it around. You can sew the other one on. In the same way, we're going to chain piece this one. So sew along the drawn diagonal line. Stop a couple of stitches before the end. Just slide the next one under your machine foot and just sew across. Stop just a little bit before the end. Take the next square, line up the drawn line and sew. And in this way, you'll save yourself time. So just make sure you've pinned everything before you start. So I've done that with all of these and I've sewn the diagonal lines and the corner squares in the opposite two corners. So now I've got four in each of them. Now, once you've trimmed all the seam allowances and pressed them open, you've now got six of the set two diamond inner square blocks. Joining the blocks. Now you've completed the patchwork, we're ready to join the blocks. Place all your blocks in this arrangement. So you've got in the top row set one, set two, set one, set two, and in the middle row set two, set one, set two, and so on. So let's join the first two blocks in the top row together. So place those right sides facing. If you keep all the blocks laying in order, you'll remember which is which. Now the important thing here is to get those centre point seams matching up. The easiest way to do this is to push a pin through the point of the seam, then pull it apart slightly and make sure the pin goes to the point in the seam in the bottom piece. Then pull that pin and you can be sure those two seams are now matching up 
and then place a pin diagonally across there to hold and then pin them together at either end as well. You can remove that vertical pin to pin them together. So now you need to sew these two blocks together. So put it under your sewing machine and using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, my foot on my machine is a quarter of an inch wide so I can just line it up but use your markings on your needle plate if not. Reverse stitch to start with to secure the seam. Then when you get to those points, just before you get to it, make sure everything's lying flat. Take the pin out and sew across the end of the point of the seam, which is quarter of an inch from the end. But if you just check that as you're sewing, then you'll get a nice neat join and the points will match up of the diamonds. You can see here, I've sewn across the point of the seam. Once you've now sewn those two together, you can sew number three block in the top row. Again, match up the seams in the same way Push a pin through the point of the seam and then just take it apart and make sure that that pin is going through the point of the seam. By taking the extra time here to match up the points and pin them, it means that when you sew them together, it's much quicker to sew and you can be sure that you'll get an accurate finish. If you just line them up and pin them together, they'll probably match up, but this is just a really good way of ensuring you get a neater finish. Sew that one in place and then sew the fourth one in place in the same way to complete the top row. So there's the top row done. And I've also sewn together the four blocks in the middle row and the four blocks in the bottom row. Now we need to press the seam allowances. We're going to nest the seams in the next step and you have to press the seam allowances in opposite directions to do this. So for the top row, Press the seam allowances away from the, fir the first block. So you can see here I've got it wrong sides up and I'm just pulling it slightly so that makes sure the seam's oh, nice and flat. And then press both seam allowances in one direction away from the first block. Once you're happy that's done, press it from the right side. Just make This just makes sure the seam allowances are nice and flat. Now take the centre row and this time the seam allowances need to be pressed towards the first block. So basically they're in the opposite direction to the first row. So press one seam at a time. When you do it you can see I sometimes just have to make sure that the seams underneath are still lying flat. Because you don't want those to be lifted up because you've pressed those away from the diamond. So there's the centre row. Again press it from the right side just because when you press it from the wrong side and you're pressing seams to one side it can sometimes have a few little creases and now with the bottom row I've already done this I've pressed the seams away from the first block so now you can see there's the top row you can see the seams facing right in this row they're facing left and in the bottom row they're facing right Joining the rows. As you've pressed the seams in opposite directions, we can now nest the seams. So take the top row and place it right sides facing with the centre row. Now to nest the seams, the seams allowances are facing opposite directions. So if you just pull one seam, slide it very slightly, you will see that the two seam allowances will crash slightly. This is because you've got the bulk of the seam allowances on one side and the bulk on the other side. So when you pull one, the top one slightly over, you will find it suddenly stops because of the two seam allowance bulks and then pin it together. So do this all the way along. Take the other seam, take the top one, slide it slightly to the left. You, it will stop when it hits the other seam allowances. You're now nesting seams and pin them together. Now pin the fabric together at the end. And now you need to make sure these points match. So in the same way as we did when we joined the blocks together, push the pin vertically through the seam allowance on one block until it comes out on the seam of the other block. And then place a pin diagonally and you can remove that vertical pin. Again, push the pin through the point of the top one. Make sure it comes out through the point of the bottom one. This will be quarter of an inch from the top, but it's easier as you did before 
if you actually pin through the seam allowances and you can make sure they match up. So I'm doing that again with this set of blocks. I know this takes extra time to make sure everything matches up, but it's a really good way of having neat edges. When you're starting patchwork, if you can use these little tricks of nesting seams and pushing vertical pins through, you'll find that your patchwork matches up. Whichever pattern you're using, whether you're using triangles or squares or whatever pieces, if you try and match up the pieces like this with pins, then you can just pop them under your sewing machine, sew it together, and you will get a much more neat and more matching finish. And now you just need to sew these two rows together. So put them underneath your sewing machine and again we're using a quarter of an inch seam allowance so use your foot or the markings on your needle plate and reverse stitch to start with to secure the seam and maintaining that quarter of an inch seam allowance once you get to the first point remove the pin just as you get to it make sure you sew over the point and now we get to the, the next this first seam that's nested so make sure the bottom seam is facing still facing the way you've pressed because sometimes when you've placed it under the machine, it pulls it round and you want to make sure that as you've nested the seams and the seam allowances are facing opposite directions, they stay in that way. So just stitch all the way down, make sure the seam allowances are facing opposite directions. You've just got to check the underneath one. You know that the top one will because you've pinned it. Remove the pin and then continue. Stitch to the next set of nest seams. And sew all the way down. Crossing over the next point, again, make sure that your needle actually goes through the point and then you'll get a neater finish. And when you get to the end of the row, reverse stitch to finish to secure the seam. So there's the two rows joined together. That's the top row and the centre row. As before, always press a seam just after you've sewn it. That sets it and removes any creases and you'll get a neater finish. Now open up the two rows and this time we're going to press the seam open and this is because we haven't got to nest any seams and also there's a lot of bulk in this area because you've got a lot of seams you've got four layers in some places and two in another and when I've got a lot of bulk like this I like to press the seam open you get a flatter finish if you prefer to press the seams to one side here then you can it's entirely up to you I just prefer to press seams open when there's more bulk Make sure the seam allowances that you've already pressed stay facing in the direction that they were earlier. Turn it over to the right side and give it another press just to neaten it and also make sure that the seam is nicely pressed open. So that's the top row and the centre row joined together. So take the bottom row and place that right sides facing with the centre row. And again with this one you need to start by nesting seams. So pull the top piece over slightly. You can slide it and you'll feel it crashing and nesting. Sew that together and then press the seam open in exactly the same way. And that's the bag front finished and you've completed all of your patchwork. Finishing touch. This is optional if you want to add wadding to your out of your bag to give it a more structured finish but you can leave out this step if you prefer. Now, if you want to add wadding, I'm using a fusible wadding here that's called H640, but that's just its code name, but it has a fusible backing. So make sure that the fusible section, so the glue side, which is a bit rougher, is facing up and then place the pieces right sides up on top. So I've got the bag out of front, that's the patchwork piece we've just made, the bag out of back, the two side gusset outer pieces and the base gusset piece. Now, if you're using a non-fusible wadding, which is fine, then you will just have to tack these into place all the way around. There's enough wadding listed in the instructions to, for all of these pieces. So just press those pieces or tack them into place if you prefer until they're all nicely secured. And then cut them out round the raw edges and quilt them. So to quilt them, you just sew through the outer and through the wadding. You can see with the bag outer front, I've just sewn along these 
diagonal lines of the seams with the outer back because this is printed rather than patchworked again i've sewn along the diagonal seams it just makes it stand out and makes the back look like you've patchworked it for the gusset pieces i sewed some vertical lines down the center of the pattern because all these patterns are printed on here you don't need to draw any lines you can just follow the patterns but use the pattern that you prefer and this is as i say an optional finish if you want to give your bag a little bit more structure making the gusset to give the bag some depth a gusset is sewn so we're going to create the gusset first so take a side gusset outer piece and the base gusset outer i'm just moving the label here so it doesn't get sewn into the seam then place the two short ends so the bottom end of the side gusset and one end of the base gusset right sides facing before you sew together you need to mark quarter of an inch from the top and quarter of an inch inwards from the bottom because when we're going to sew up to these lines so pin them right sides facing make sure those side edges and all the raw edges are matching up so i'm just going to put a couple of pins in across the top edge and then just to make sure that these stay straight while i'm sewing them just put a couple of pins a bit further down these will stay in as you sew it just helps to keep it level now start at one mark and stop at the other reverse stitching at each mark so you can see here i've sewn but i've left a quarter of an inch unstitched this helps when you join the gusset to the bag outer and the bag front and back later it means that you can bend the gusset round much easier and it'll be neater so press that seam open and flat now you need to join the other side gusset piece to the other end of the base gusset so you've got side gusset outer, base gusset outer, and then the, there's the other side gusset outer. And in the same way as before, place them short ends right sides facing. Again, take your tape measure and mark a quarter of an inch in from one side and a quarter of an inch in from the other side. I'm just using an erasable pen for this. Now pin them together, making sure all the raw edges match up. And then to make sure that they stay straight, I'll pin them a bit further down. I often do this when I'm working with narrow strips like this, as they can sometimes turn a little bit. And also it helps to keep them stable because you're leaving the quarter of an inches unstitched. So again, stitch between those mark lines, reverse stitching at either end of the seam, just like this. Then open up the seam and press it flat. Because I've got the wadding on here, it's a little bit more difficult to press it flat, but just try and get it pressed nice and flat. It'll just help with assembly later. And then that's the gusset outer finish. So you've got side gusset, base gusset and side gusset all joined in one long strip. Assembling the bag outer. So take the bag out of fob which is the patchwork piece you've made over made before and take the long gusset strip that you've just joined together now place one side gusset right sides facing down the right hand side side of that patchwork bag outer match up the top edges so you've got the long edge and the top edges matched up and pin together and pin it together just a little bit further down to hold it straight now at the other end open up that seam allowance and the right hand side of the seam allowance needs to match up with the bottom edge of the bag outer. So if you pin that into place, that will hold it nicely. So that means that that seam that you've stopped stitching at is quarter of an inch above the bottom of the bag outer. So pin it together along the length as well, making sure that the raw edges are matching up all the time. Then sew it together from the top but stop stitching exactly on that seam don't stitch beyond the seam so don't stitch across the second bottom seam allowance so you can see that i've stopped stitching a quarter of an inch before the end so the bottom quarter of an inch is left free now turn it round once you finish sewing that and open up the seam at the other end of the base gusset and pin it to the bottom edge of the bag outer so again remember the right hand edge of that seam allowance needs to match up with the side of the bag outer just like you did before which means that you will stop stitching quarter of an inch before the end 
So open up the seam allowance. Now, if you've used wadding, you might find it easier if you open up and pin into place both seam allowances just to hold them flat because you've got to stop stitching on that seam and not beyond it. So now if we pin the rest into the place, because you stopped stitching quarter of an inch before the end of this one, you can see now when you open up the gusset that you've got a nice right angle. So you've got like a little square on the bottom there unstitched. And by leaving that quarter of an inch unstitched, this means that you can get the gusset to go round a lot neater because you can actually open it up. If you don't leave the quarter of an inch unstitched, it's a little bit harder to get it to go round the corner. But this will just give you a neat, a nice neat finish. And on the outside of your bag, you'll have much neater corners. So pin it into place all the way along. Now start stitching on top just on that seam, stitch all the way along and stop stitching and reverse stitch at the other seam. Don't stitch beyond it. So here you can see I've stitched it into place all the way along. And you can see again, there's that quarter of an inch left unstitched. So now join the other side gusset outer into place. So match up the top edges first by pinning it into place. And then you can turn this seam round Fold the seam allowance over like this and pin it down, particularly when you need you use wadding because when you've pressed it open, it doesn't like to stay the wadding sort of in the way. So if you pin that seam allowance down, then you can pin it together all the way along the edge. Make sure the raw edges are matching as you pin. And then start stitching on one side and work all the way up to the top, reverse stitching at both ends of the seam, just like this. So that's the front outer attached to one side of the gusset. And you can see here, I've got nice, neat corners now, and that's because of leaving the quarter of an inch unstitched. Now you need to attach the bag outer back to the other side of the gusset seams in exactly the same way. So place the gusset right sides facing with one side of the bag back outer and in the same way as before pin it together at the top making sure the raw edges are matching and then pin it together at the bottom again open up those seam allowances and make sure that it, they are quarter of an inch before above the bottom of the bag. So if you just pin the seam allowances into place, just make sure that the end of that gusset seam is quarter of an inch above the bottom. So you can see that the seam allowance opened up just matches the bottom of the bag. And again, pin it into place along the length, making sure that you match up the raw edges. Now sew it together from the top and stopping and reverse stitching at that seam and then stitch the base seam. Remember, do one seam at a time. So always pin one seam and sew, pin one seam and sew until you've worked all the way round. So this is the bag outer back, now all joined on to the gusset. So if you turn it all right sides out and push out the corners, you can see now that the gusset is joined between the front out and the back outer. This just gives your bag a little bit more depth so you can get more into it and it's all nice and neat, and you've got nice neat corners. It's always worth checking before you go any further, always turn things right sides out to make sure that you haven't accidentally make, got any little creases or tucks or missed the seam. If you double check, because this is the stage at which you can redo things. Now, before you go any further, open up all of the seam allowances and press them open and flat. Take the time to do this here. You'll get a neater finish later and it's easier to do it before you've assembled the whole bag. Assembling the bag lining. The bag lining is sewn together in exactly the same way as the bag outer. So take all the, the lining pieces, the front, the back and the gussets and start by joining together the, the gusset pieces. So sew together the bottom end of one side gusset to one end of the base. Remember, we're going to leave a quarter of an inch unstitched either side. So mark a quarter of an inch inwards from each side and then pin it together so that the raw edges are matching. And then sew together inside those quarter of an inches so you leave a quarter of an inch unstitched. 
Then take the other end of the base gusset and the bottom end of the other side gusset, place them right sides facing. And again, mark a quarter of an inch inwards from each end. Pin together, making sure the raw edges are matching. Because I haven't got any wadding in here, I haven't pinned further down because it will stay together better. And sew together, starting and finishing at these marks. So now the whole side, the gusset lining is, met, is stitched together. So you can see I've left the quarter of an inch unstitched at either side. Now take the front lining. I'm just moving the label out of the way so it doesn't get caught in the seams and place one of the side gusset linings down the right hand side. This is exactly the same way as we did with the bag outer. Match up the top edge and the bottom edge and you can see here in the same way as with the outer the seam allowance needs to match up with the bottom of the front outer. And I've pressed the seam allowances open as, because it makes it much easier to join together. And you can also see where to stop stitching because you have to stop stitching exactly on that seam. So sew it together, starting from the top and stopping at that seam. And then join the base gusset across the bottom in the same way, remembering to start and finish stitching at those quarter of an inch seams. And then sew together up the other side in exactly the same way. So there's the front lining attached to one side of the gusset strip and I've pressed these seams open. It's easier to do it at this stage before you join on the next. Now we're going to join the back lining to the other side of the gusset. Now this is done in the same way as the bag outer. The only difference is, is this time we need to leave a turning gap for turning the whole bag right sides out. So take the raw edge of the base gusset and fold it in half just to find the centre. Make a little crease to mark that centre point. Now we're going to leave a six inch gap unstitched and the gap needs to be in the centre. So if you mark three inches either side of this centre gap mark, then that leaves a six inch gap and you can be sure it's placed centrally. So if you just place a couple of little marks there, you know where to stop and start finishing. It's easier to mark this up before you pin it all together. So there's the back lining. Place the raw side edge, the unstitched side of the side gusset, down the side. So pin it into place at the top. And then at the other end, making sure that the seam allowance, the right hand seam allowance is level with the bottom. And pin it together. Now stitch, start stitching at the top, stop at the quarter of an inch, then stitch all the way across the bottom, but this time, go from the corner, reverse stitch at one mark, and then start at the other mark, reverse stitching and stop at there, at the end, and then stitch the rest of the side gusset into place. And it will then look like this. So you've now joined the front lining and the back lining, either side of the gusset pieces, with a gap left in the base seam for turning it right sides out later. So turn it all right sides out and you can see I've already pressed the seam allowances open and flat. And just check that everything's neat, making sure that you haven't got any little creases or tucks. And that's the lining complete. And you can see there's the turning gap that we'll be using later. Finishing touch. This is an optional finishing touch if you want to add your magnetic snap to your lining to hold it closed. So take your magnetic snap and to start with you need the male section and a, black, a back plate. So put the female section to one side and you'll just need the back plate and the male section. Now on the bag lining front, matching up the side seams of the gusset, fold it in half just to find the centre of the front. You can measure it instead but if you fold it in half and place a little crease then that will show you the centre of the front. Now working from the wrong side measure one and a half inches down from the top edge on the centre crease and just make a mark. Now take the back plate and place the circle, circular centre hole of the back plate on that mark 
and then draw through the vertical slots either side. Now you need to cut along this slot. A seam ripper is ideal for this. You can just poke the seam ripper in at the bottom of the slot and snip across the top. You can use a small pair of scissors for this instead. It's just a seam ripper is a bit easier. Then take a one and a half inch square of wadding. This just is used to reduce the pull on the fabric. When you're opening and closing the bag a lot, it stops the fabric from getting damaged or torn and just adds a bit more structure. So place the back plate centrally on there, draw through the vertical lines and cut through the lines just like you did before. Now take the male section of the magnetic snap and working from the right side, push the prongs of the snap through the slits that you've cut. So that the magnetic snap is on the right side and the prongs come through to the wrong side. Take the piece of wadding that you cut a little slit into, place the prongs through the slits and then take the back plate, place that over the prongs on top of the wadding and then fold the pot prongs. I like to fold mine inwards, I find it more secure, but you can fold them outwards if you prefer. And then that's the male section attached. Now to attach the female section, take the lining back and again, find the center by matching up the seam allowances and fold it in half and make a little crease to mark the center. And again, working from the wrong side, measure down from the top on the center line, same as you did before. And then place the back plate, the other back plate that comes with the female section, put the little hole on the back plate over that center mark and then draw vertical lines through the slots and place the back plate centrally on the other piece of wadding and again draw vertical lines through the slots. Then cut along these lines and then cut along the lines in the wadding. Now take the female section of the bag clasp and working from the right side, push the prongs through the slits that you've made through to the wrong side. Take the wadding and place the prongs through the slits that you've cut in that. Put the back plate on top and then fold the prongs over to secure it. Now, if you turn the lining wrong sides out, you can just double check that everything matches up nicely and that they actually meet. But because you've measured, they will do. And that's the magnetic snap attached. Making the handles. Take one of the handle pieces and you can remove the label now. And we're going to start by turning the short end under to the wrong side by quarter of an inch. So if you measure and mark half an inch inwards from the short end, then fold the short end to meet over with these marks, then you can be sure that you've got an accurate turnover of a quarter of an inch. So give that a little press to hold it in place. And then repeat that at the other short end. So if you measure and mark a half an inch in from the short ends and then fold it over. And the reason you do this is that this means that these short ends are sewn down at the edges when you sew the strap and holds them securely into place. It's easier than folding them in later if you sew them in at this point. Now fold the whole strap in half with right sides together, making sure those folded over ends stay turned under. And then with the raw long edges matching, just press it together all the way along. I found that when you're sewing a long strip together like this, if you press it in half first before you pin it, it just helps to get everything lining up and flat. Before you get to the end, just match up the other short ends. Because sometimes when you fold something in half, one side moves over more than the other. So to make sure that that match that short end matches up exactly. Pin those short ends together just down the length, making sure that the bottom is turned under as well. And then pin together all the way along. But by 
pinning it, pressing it first and then pinning it, you can make sure that it doesn't get twisted and skewed at all, which it can do when it's such a long strip. And then again, pin it together at the other end, making sure that those folded and under ends stay folded under at the top and the bottom. Now sew the whole handle together, starting at one end and working all the way to the other end, just along the length, not along the short ends. When you've done that, press the seam open and flat by laying it down flat like this and pressing it. I'm going to use a turning tube for turning mine right sides out, so I've tacked together across one end. So place the tube inside. If you don't have a turning tube, you'll just have to carefully turn it right sides out. But this is just a quicker and easy way to do to do it. Place the tube inside and then take the stick that comes with the tube and the tacked under end, push that all the way through the tube until it comes out the other end. And then you can turn the whole tube right sides out like this and remove those tacking stitches that you put on the short end. They're just there so that you've got something for the stick to push against when you're pushing it through the tube. So take all the tacking stitches out and remove the stick. Now you need to press it so that the seam runs down the centre of the back edge. So you can see all the little black dots that are printed onto the tube. They're there to represent the holes that you would get. If this was a leather strap, you would have punched holes where the stitching goes through. And so once you've pressed it, you'll see that those little black dots lie on the edge to resemble a real leather strap. Now top stitch down both long edges. And then it will look like this. The short ends are folded under still and the black dots lie right on the edges. And then repeat that to make the other handle in the same way. Now the handles are going to be sewn to the outside of the bag, so it's easier to put the marks, the sewing marks on at this stage. So just mark eighth of an inch up from the bottom, and then mark one and a half inches up from the bottom. I'm just making a small mark now because I'm going to be sewing along these marks. I'm using my ruler here to make sure that those lines are nice and straight. So just draw a line all the way across at the one and a half inch mark and another one an eighth of an inch. Now to make the handles stronger, we're going to sew them in place round the edges and also with the cross. So starting at where the top stitch lines are, they're about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Draw a diagonal line from the, diagonal line from the top left to the bottom right hand corner and then another diagonal line from the top right to the bottom left hand corner, starting and finishing at those top stitch lines. So now you can see there's the, a rectangle drawn at the bottom and top with a cross in the centre. The top stitch lines you've got form the other side of the rectangle. So mark both ends of that strap and both ends of the other strap handle in the same way and it, they're made and finished. Attaching the handles. Lay the bag outer front down flat and right sides up. Now measure three and a half inches in from the left hand side seam where it joins the gusset and place a pin there and then measure three inches down from the top and place the pin where those two points cross and just make a little mark here. You'll be covering that up with the handle in a minute so it's fine, just make a little mark. Now take one end of one of the handles and place the left hand bottom corner on that mark. So you can see that the handle is just sitting there at that bottom mark and pin it into place. Make sure you only pin through the bag front and not into the bag back. And then making sure that the handle is nice and straight. Pin above where you've marked that cross because you want to be able to keep this pin in place where whilst you're stitching. So if you put it about half an inch to inch above, that just keeps that end of the handle straight. Now on the other side, again, measure three and a half inches inwards from that right hand side seam where the front joins the gusset and put a pin and then measure three inches down from the top and then you need to move that pin a bit so where the two marks cross put your pin and I'm just double checking I've moved it in the same place now you can place a mark or I've just left my pin in here now the bottom right corner of the other hand of the handle put there before you pin it into place, just run it through your fingers to make sure it's not twisted and it's laying nice and flat. So pin it at the bottom 
and then making sure that the handle stayed nice and straight. Then you can pin it into place. I mean, I've measured this and pinned it in place two inches up from the bottom, but you could just make sure it's out of the way. Then you can sew the ends of this handle into place. So work across all the way around the rectangle and then diagonally through the cross and the same with the other side so you sew it into place all the way around now you can see here i've sewn around the rectangle and through the cross that i've marked and this makes it extra strong add some decoration too pin and attach the other handle to the other side of the bag in exactly the same way assembling the bag now you've attached the handles make sure they're facing downwards and place the outer inside the lining so the right side's facing so if you just fold it in thirds like this you can put the outer inside the lining now you need to match up the side gusset seams of the outer and the lining together they'll be right sides facing and because you've pressed them open earlier it's a little bit easier to pin them together so take one side seam and place it exactly on top of the other side seam making sure it matches exactly and pin it together and then work your way around the bag so make sure the next side seam lies exactly on top of the side seam so the right side's facing and then go around to the other side seam by anchoring it at the side seams first you can make sure the lining sits exactly in the right place inside the outer because it's important that these match up. So always match up when you're doing something like this, the seams first, and then you can match up the sections between the seams. As you're pinning them together, make sure those seam allowances are pinned so they're open and flat, and you'll just get a neater finish at the top because there will be less bulk at these seams. Now you can pin between the side seams. So I'm just pinning across the top of the gusset first. Now make sure the handles are facing downwards because you don't want them to get caught in this seam. You can pin them in place as well, but if you make sure they just poke them so they're facing downwards, they won't get caught in this seam. So pin it together all the way across the top. You can see where I've put the magnet, it's snapping, that the wadding won't go into this seam at all because it's measured so it reaches below that. If you haven't put a magnetic snap in, then don't worry, you won't have this. And then pin together across the other side it will all match up exactly because the lining and the outer are all measured and cut from the panel to exactly the same size again push those handles downwards so they don't get caught in this seam and make sure the raw edges are matching and then pin it together across the top Now you can sew the lining to the outer all the way around the top edge using your quarter inch seam allowance. Now once that's done, pull the outer out from the lining like this, they're lying flat, not turning it right sides out, but just pulling it out. Now open up this seam that you've just sewn and press it flat, working all the way around. You'll have to rearrange the way that you folded the bag to make sure that you do it all the way around but it would just give you a neater edge now here's a little trick for you to keep the lining inside the outer so it doesn't pull out if you take the bottom of that gusset seam on the lining fold it so it meets the same gusset seam on the outer now match up the raw edges and the seams and just clip them together so make sure the raw edges are matching and the side corners and clip them together. You can use pins, but because there's quite a lot of layers here, I've used fabric clips instead. And then you're gonna sew those two together, but inside the seam allowance. Before I do that, I'm going to just clip the other one. So take the lining, follow it around with your finger so it matches up the outer. You can just bend it at that top seam. Make sure it all matches up. And the reason you do this is that it holds the lining inside the bag. If you don't sew this on, then the lining can pull out somewhere and it won't sit as neatly. So just clip that into place and then stitch through all the layers, but inside the seam allowance. So about an eighth of an inch from the raw edge all the way along. Don't stitch into the side seams. You can see here, it's just an anchoring seam, just started within the side seams and within the seam allowance, because then this sewing won't be seen from the right side. Now all you've got to do is turn the bag right sides out through the gap that you left in the bottom of the lining. 
Having stitched the bottom of the lining to the outer, it won't make any difference to this, to, to this process at all. So you don't have to stitch the outer to the lining, but it's just a little finishing trick that gives you a neater look. So turn everything right sides out. And you'll find now the corners of the lining, bottom of the lining sewn to the bottom of the outer. So you just need to sew that turning gap closed. So because you pressed that seam open earlier, the edges of the turning gap are folded to the inside. So just make sure that when you turned it right sides, they're not, they're not creased. If they are, just press them again to make sure that the edges are turned under by quarter of an inch. And then pin them together, matching up the folded under edge. And then you can sew this turning gap closed. You can slip stitch it by hand, or if you prefer, you can just top stitch it by machine close to the fold. And this is what it looks like. So that's the turning gap closed. Now you can turn the whole bag right sides out. Push out all of those corners. Just because you've got several layers of stitching here so just push them out but because we pushed out those corners when we did the outer it's much easier now to do it so there's the lining held nice and securely inside so for the top edge and to finish off the bag fold this well roll the seam between your finger so it lies right on the edge because you press that seam allowance open earlier it's easier to do this so just roll it between your fingers and give it a nice press to make sure that the seam allowance the seam lies exactly on the top edge Make sure you do press this before you sew. You'll just get a neater finish. And then once that's done, you can top stitch all the way around. I top stitched it like this, a quarter of an inch from the top of the bag. It neatens the top of the bag and holds the top edge of the lining inside. So now your bag is finished. You can see the lining is staying neatly on the inside because of those little seams we made. I've put the, got the magnetic snap to hold it closed. And your beautiful patchwork bag is finished and ready to fill and take shopping or to the office or to the shops. It'll fit books and files and it's a real show-stopping bag.